Jim Andrews had a way of getting right to the point. A lot of points at that. The big man from Lima, Ohio, remains one of only four Wildcats during the past 50 years to average 20 points or more during two seasons. Andrews was recognized as an all-Southeastern Conference performer as a junior and as a senior giving Coach Adolph Rupp a sizable powerhouse in the low post. Andrews led the Cats to SEC championships in all three of his varsity seasons, all three of which also included trips to the NCAA tournament and two berths in the Elite Eight. Andrews rang up 43 double-doubles in school history, which to this day ranks third all-time at UK. That speaks to the mark Andrews made on Big Blue Nation's cherished basketball tradition. 2022 UK Athletics Hall of Famer, Jim Andrews. I didn't know I was that good. <laughs> I too want to thank the UK Athletic Department for this honor. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, but particularly uh, a couple of people I'd like to mention uh, besides Mitch, uh, Dennis Emery was, was very instrumental, I know, and kind of in the background, but I do appreciate everything that he did in trying to get my name out in the front. Uh, for me to be able to uh, be recognized for this honor tonight. Uh, one thing I'd like to do, I kind of saw this at another banquet, so I'm sort of going to steal it. Um, are there any veterans that are in the audience tonight? If you would, please stand up. Or any first responders, I'd like for you to stand up. Tomorrow's going to be Veterans Day, and I'd like to recognize these people <laughs> for their accomplishments. Thank you. Thank you for your service. You know, it came very close to uh, not going to UK. There were a lot of little things that had to happen, and it's amazing how uh, God works in your life. But uh, <clears throat> I had gone to five different sixth grades. We moved that much. We moved back and forth between West Virginia. In fact, I consider West Virginia to be my home, even though I was born in Lima, Ohio, and the fact that I did graduate from there, but there was a lot of moves in between. A lot of things had to happen. And in fact, if we had not moved from West Virginia to Michigan when I was in the ninth grade, I may never have played basketball at all. And it's kind of hard to believe that, that I just didn't have those opportunities living in a small town in Buckhannon, West Virginia, to play, uh, to play basketball. But when we made the move, and we made that up to, to uh, Michigan, and I played there for two and a half years, I, I fell in love with the sport. I had played a little bit in the fifth, sixth, and seventh grade, but then I skipped the eighth and, and most of the ninth grade. In fact, I only played two ball games up in Michigan. On, in the ninth grade. But, but from there, uh, my dad, of course, was because of work, and he got this job up in Michigan, and that, that, that did not work out. So we moved back to Lyme, Ohio. And from there is kind of the rest of the story. And it's kind of an interesting recruiting story. Coach Hall had been doing a lot of the recruiting up to, uh, up to that point, and actually beyond. And <clears throat> Coach was, uh, had good success in the Dayton area. He got a guy named Mike Pratt, and he had a couple other players that he was looking at, and he thought he would expand his horizon and go to Findlay, Ohio. So as he's driving up I-75, he gets to thinking, you know, I may need a little gas by the time I see this kid play in Findlay, and I'm gonna have to get some gas to get back, so I'll, bust, I'll just stop here in Lima and get some gas. So thus back in the days when you didn't pump your own, you had an attendant. And the attendant starts up this conversation with Coach, and Coach was always very personable. And he goes, hey, you got any ball players around here? Kid said, yeah. 
He said, there's a kid that moved in from Michigan. He's averaging 36 points a game and 22 rebounds. Coach goes, huh? He said, yeah. He said, in fact, they're playing up the road. He said, you may want to go over and watch him did. Coach Hall came over to watch me play. And actually, there was another player I was playing against that night who wound up coming to Kentucky, uh, a kid named Dan Perry. But uh, later, uh, Coach told me, he said, to this day, I can't remember the name of that kid in Fidley, Ohio, that I was going up to see. <laughs> <laughs> so that kind of was uh, the, the, the recruiting start. But up to that point, and I'm, I know I may get a couple boos here, but I was ready to go to Tennessee. Ooh, I know, bad, bad. Ray Mears had been in Wittenberg, and... Uh, had, had made a lot of connections in that area, and uh, Ray found out about me moving in from Michigan, and he already knew about me from Michigan because they were recruiting me at Michigan, Michigan State. And uh, he uh, pretty much had me convinced that's where I wanted to go. Coach Hall was smart enough to realize my recruiting trip needed to be the Tennessee-Kentucky game. So I came and watched him play, and I decided I didn't want to. If you all know Ray Mears, you know what I'm talking about. Stand around for four years with my hands on my knees while watching Mike Edwards shoot the basketball. It just wasn't in my game. I liked the run, get up and down the floor, and that's what I wanted to do. So that part then started the, my, my history with, with Kentucky. And... You know, from there, I, I just can't be any more grateful for all the experiences and the time that I've had uh, at the university. And I want to thank everybody who's been along this journey with me, including a lot of my former players. I want to mention Tom Payne, for example. Uh, Tom and I used to go at it pretty hard every day. In fact, when Coach Hall was recruiting me, he had that was the first original idea that he had for having the Twin Towers. And in fact, one game, Coach Rupp had had some illness that year. Four or five times he, was, he had missed a game, and Coach Hall got to, to coach. And uh, he decided to try to play Tom and me. After the first time that happened, Coach Rupp brought Coach Hall in and said, don't ever do that again. <laughs> so... And if you, you watch the tapes of the Western game, you'll see that Tom and I actually played for about 10 or 15 minutes together trying to find a way to stop Jim McDaniel and Clarence Glover, which obviously we weren't successful at. But uh, it's been a, this is a great night. It's wonderful. I just appreciate all the, the support, like I said, of over the years. In particular, I've had some really good friends like Tracy and Othel Turpin. They've been good friends. We travel together. We go watch the Cats. We go to the SEC tournaments together. Uh, we didn't particularly enjoy last year very much. Uh, we lost our shirts on our tickets, but we had a good time anyway. And then my biggest fan of all is my wife, Julie. I, I'm not real sure what she's going to do. I mean, for the past three months, she has been, we're walking down the street, and she's stopping people. Hey, you know who this guy is? He's going into the Hall of Fame. <laughs> Just last night, we're at Ramsey's Restaurant. Run into an old friend. Hey, you know what's happening in the gym tomorrow? <laughs> so, babe, you're just going to have to get over it. That's all I can tell you. <laughs> Again, thank you. Thank you all very much. And, and particularly, I like to... Also, want to recognize like Derek Bryant. Getting back to see Derek again. I mean, we haven't seen each other since we were freshmen, right? This is great. And these are the kinds of things I think these events do. They bring they bring back people like us back together, our teammates. Thank you. Thank you.